Hi everyone, Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today we're going to talk about TRICARE for Life Enrollment. TRICARE for Life is a military insurance that is available to certain beneficiaries that served in the military. There are certain criteria of which military insurance a active or a former active or retired military personnel can have. And one of them that is very common is TRICARE for Life. So we're going to actually just go through this very quickly today on how their enrollment is done. Theirs is a little bit more unique as in they do not have a portal in which this is done. It's actually a paper enrollment form, which is kind of nostalgic for me. I'm going to be honest with you, but it also can add additional time because you do have to snail mail it. So uh, if you want to find how to get the forms for TRICARE for Life enrollment, you would just come into Google like I did here. You'll see I typed in TRICARE for Life enrollment form for providers. This is a very easy way to find enrollment for most insurances. You can put in the insurance name, enrollment for providers, and it should generate links for you to click on and find what you're looking for. So I went ahead and clicked on download a form. You will see they have a whole website page of different forms that are needed. So they have authorizations once you are enrolled, claim submission if you're going to do it via paper. They have a bunch of stuff on here, okay? So it's not just for enrollment, so you have to look for what you need. This is through WPS, it's the Military and Veterans Health. You can see it says TRICARE for Life Provider Portal right here. And we're going to go down and we're looking for provider and group information, right, for enrollment. So we're going to come down here. We're going to look for whatever is specific to the group and or providers in which I'm going to be enrolling. And I see that they have the allied health provider applications. We have birthing centers. Ah, clinic or group practice application. So if I click on that, it brings me to this form. And this is what would need to be done for a new practice as a group to enroll and become participating as a group. You can see that it has you date it, just like all forms used to when you had to hand fill them out. Group name, fax number at the group, your federal tax ID or EIN number, telephone number to the practice, the group NPI number, right? Because we are registering and enrolling as a clinic or group. If you have your Medicare PTAN number already for your practice, you would put it here. If it's still pending or in process, you would note that just so they are aware that it you will be hopefully participating at some point. You would put your clinic or office location, street address, and then if your billing address is different, like if you have a lockbox or something like that, you would put that here. The corporate name, so if you have a corporate name on your tax setup and your W-9, the group name would most likely be your DBA in that situation, and the corporate name would be your taxed entity and the corporate address if they're different. If they're the same as above, I would just write same or see above on each of these lines. Again, you don't want to leave things blank because people may think when they're reviewing the application that it was missed on accident. So you want to make it very clear that you didn't skip it by mistake, that it was on purpose. So you just put something in there. Even an A would be fine. The date the legal entity was established, you should be able to gather that from your business license information. And then it asks a few questions over here. Is your organization certified by Medicare as these different acronyms? 
If they look foreign to you, then most likely you're going to say no, because if you are one of these facilities or these categories of facilities, I should say, you would definitely know and you would put yes. And then you would put a copy of your certification that you have to receive from Medicare for those. And then it asks, how is the purpose of your corporation defined in articles of incorporation? When you create a business, you should have articles of incorporation that you have. And so you would provide that a copy when you send this in. And then they ask, do you bill only for professional services or facility services such as part daycare charges for treatment rooms, etc.? So if you're just a standard clinic medical office, then you would just say that you, you know, only bill for professional services. Um, if you do, if this does apply to you, then you would put yes. Other than that, you would put no. And again, it's something that you would definitely be aware of. And then it asks if are the group members all the same specialty? Yes or no. That means the providers. And then if yes, name the specialty. And then it says, please submit request for tax ID number and certification from the IRS W-9 form. So you want to make sure that you're going to submit your W-9. And I also included my IRS form that shows my tax ID, uh, a copy of that with this. Okay. And then you have to read through these certifications and then the person who's completing the application, in my opinion, it should be the owner of the practice, even if it's someone else filling out the application on their behalf, should sign and date it. Then there's a conflict of interest statement that you would need to read. And then there's special authorization. And it's going through that you certify you're an associate with the name of the clinic and then the address of the clinic, and you read through all of this. Now, down here is where every provider that will be practicing in that group that you listed above would be listed. So you need to put their name, their title, which is nurse practitioner, doctor, physical therapist, whatever it may be. And then they actually have to sign this. And I know they don't give you a lot of room, so you have to do the best you can. And then you would put their um, specialty and social security number. So you would put, um, you know, if it's a nurse practitioner, if it's a family nurse practitioner, if it's an MDDO, you put with their specialty, what they're boarded in, and their social security number. You will notice that social security numbers are still used by government insurances. So like Medicare, military, sometimes Medicaid for providers. Other than that, it's usually just the MPI one numbers and their um, dates of birth and their legal names and their license numbers. But with government, you need your so their social security numbers. And then you have to list their state license number um, if they have one. Okay. So this is very important. It's kind of like the roster, if you will. And you need to make sure you put everyone who will be practicing under that group that you're aware of on this document. And then it goes into the authorized signer and you have to read through all of this. And down here, I just wanna point out that if your claims are computer generated, which most people's are anymore, right? Cause everything is sent electronically and usually you lock your progress notes or they lock their progress notes by putting in a password or clicking a button that says lock or something like that. It's computer generated and it also will include if there's a rubber stamp authorization that's still being used for like signature or something like that. This needs to be completed and notarized. Um, so it would be, you know, the name of the practice, the group MPI, the tax ID of the group, the address, and then uh, whoever is going to sign on behalf of the group. Again, I believe it should be the owner provider that does this and actually have their signature and uh, have it notarized. Okay. Um, this can be a little misleading because it says computer generated facsimile, which would be like a fax. But when I look up computer generated facsimile definition, it does include electronic medical records when I do a Google search. So to not delay things from 
being processed for you, I would just do this even if you don't need it because it would really be terrible if you skip this part going, oh, I don't think this pertains to me and you send it in and then they say, well, we got your application, but we still need this from you, right? So err on the side of caution. I've been meaning to call TRICARE for Life to ask them specifically if this includes the computer generated in like EMRs and when it says electronically signed kind of situation. I just haven't found the time. So if you actually know about this and you've done this recently, if you don't mind putting your experience and what was required or not required in the comments below to help out everybody else, I'd really appreciate it. But that's it. That's all that needs to be sent in. This application completed, of course, in its entirety and attaching the W-9, attaching the articles of incorporation, everything that it tells you and sending it on to its next stop. And you can see this, it says, please return to, and this is the address I recommend when you mail it off to send it certified or some way of tracking um, so that you can make sure that it does get to its destination and then you'll have an idea from the date it's received. Maybe put it out another two to four weeks on your calendar to follow up on it with TRICARE for Life if you haven't heard anything, okay? So just make sure you read through all of this. Hopefully you'll be able to find it. On top of the group application, you will need to do your provider's own individual application. So here is one for the physician specifically. So each individual provider also needs to have their own application filled out um, and sent in. So you want to make sure that you go through this list. You have the providers all fill out their corresponding um, documents and that you get it all sent off together in one packet before you mail it. I can't stress this enough. Make copies of all the documents for your own records in case it gets lost. They can't find something. You need to refer to it later on. If they have a question, you know what you entered. So make a copy of everything for your records before you mail it off, but do it all in one packet. Do the clinic and group with all of the providers application documents all together so it's easier to track and they get everything at once okay if you have any questions or comments if you have any input you would like to add or share please put that in the comments below smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and please share this with your colleagues whom you think it would help Thank you so much for the support. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.